Look, using VS Code without any extensions is like driving a car with only one gear. Not something you would want to do, right? So in this video, I will share with you 12 extensions which I use on a daily basis, make my life easier, make my workflow easier, and something which you probably should also try to implement yourself. So without any further talking anymore, let me right here show you my first extension. All right, we're now on my screen and this is currently the default VS Code page, I guess, which we get when we open VS Code or freshly install it. Now would you say this looks nice? I personally would say no, it isn't nice. It could be even better. So now this is already the perfect time for the first extension which I want to share with you and this is our theme. Now our theme is a theme which you can use and right here I can click on enable to enable it and now you already see that it looks already way better. At least I think this looks better and many comments also ask me on YouTube what is your theme and this is our theme. I think it looks beautiful. I tried already many themes, free ones, paid ones, light theme, dark theme. I tried everything. Nothing really stuck with me, but our theme is something which I already have been using for months. I think it's great and I don't really want to change anything. So this is the first extension which I want to share with you. Let's now continue with the second extension. Now the second extension which I want to share with you is auto rename tag. Now what is auto rename tag? Do you know the problem when you open your page.tsx or any file in a React context and you want to change it, for example, from a body to a section element or from a div to a section or anything you want? And you probably already know the problem. If I right here try to do a section, you see that the bottom part does not update. It's still in body. What I have to do now is uh, go manually and change it to a section. Now, do I want to do that? No, it takes time. It's annoying. But if I now actually right here enable the auto rename tag extension, so I will click on re uh, enable, go back and for example now actually rename it to a body, you will see that this top part changes, but also the bottom part changes automatically. It saves a lot of time, makes your life easier, and I would highly recommend you guys to install this package because honestly it's such a small extension, but it gives you such a big benefit. But now since you know about auto rename tag, let's continue with the third extension. Now the third extension which I want to show you guys is called Snapshot. Do you know the problem when you want to share with your friends in code snippet but you don't want to use any external website because there are thousands of external websites free and paid where you can actually create a code snippet, create an image and then share it with your friends. But honestly I don't want to go to a different website, search for one, write again the, uh, the whole code manually, I just want to do it in VS Code. And thankfully an extension which is called Code Snapshot exists where I can do everything inside of VS Code. Let me show you an example. So I again have my layout right here and let's say I want to share right here this code. So what I can do is click on command shift P right here write code snapshot then a new tab opens and this is what you see right here. But now we want to have our content inside of here. How do I do that? Well I highlight what I want to have inside of here. Let's say I want to share my metadata right here. I'll just highlight that and now you will see right here on the right side that we have now a beautiful snippet with this metadata which I highlighted. Now this is not exclusive to to just react or any I guess file it works with any file you use and this is actually something I highly recommend you guys because a it's free it works great and it's also very easy to share with your friends so if you click on this button right here you can then actually save it to your computer to your local device and then share it with whoever you want to and now let's actually come to the next extension now the next extension which I want to share with you is code time now I used already a lot of actual extensions and software which actually tracked how much hours I spent right here coding. But personally, most of them didn't work for me in the long run. Most had some bugs, didn't work at some point, I don't know, something just didn't work. But code time is something which I now used for some time, for, for a few months, and it never failed on me. I can see how much hours I worked, I can see how much uh, hours I spent on one project, or on one day, or in one week, in one month, and it's just in general quite nice. So right here on the right side we have a sidebar, and we have an icon right here for code time. I can click on it, and then right here you already see how much hours I work today. So for example, today I already worked one hour and 40 minutes, which isn't that much, but again it's quite nice to see in summary of how much hours you work today, in one week, in one month, on one 
one specific project on another project, just in general to have an actual number to work with. So this is something I can highly recommend. It's free and you only have to sign up with one account. So definitely try it out. And now let's continue with the next extension. Now this right here is the fifth extension and this is draw.io. Now this extension is not official draw.io integration, but it's unofficial. Nevertheless, it works great. Now what is this draw.io extension? Let me actually show it to you without even explaining too much. I will open my explorer, go right here inside any folder. I will go in the app folder. Right here you will see I can create a new file. So let's just say hello.draw.io and then I can open that. You will see now we have a bit of a loading state and now right here we have an I guess diagram or not a diagram but inside of this tab I can create my own diagram. So right here for example we have general and inside of here I can just use any shape so in circle then I could create a line and then say hey this circle points to this database right here. Also for example if I click on advanced we have a lot of more shapes on misc and then right here we have also I guess diagrams itself and table. I could write something inside of here if I would want to so ASDF and I don't know hello so it's just great it's something which I can then git push to my github repository and something which I can use a lot of times so I don't have to use any external service but everything is already right here inside of my VS code I don't have to go to any website but again everything is inside of here now the next extension which I want to share with you guys is ES7 plus now what is that well let me show it to you if I now go inside of my layout file I will just delete everything and how do we always start Start in a React context when we create a new world. Well, we have to export default a function. So we have to create a React component. Now, how do you do it manually? Well, you write export, uh, write your default function. You then give it a name. Then you invoke that. Then you open that. It takes time. We don't want to do that. Time is money. So for that, this extension helps us a lot. So what we can do is use this extension right here, E7+. Plus. It's just React snippets. They actually save a lot of time. And as an example, I can delete that, create now in React component with RAFCE. Now I export default this component and as you see it was just one command and I have now wrote everything which I had to write manually. Also it does not only work with React components but for example we could also do in console.log. For that we just do in CLG and then right here I can console log whatever I want to do. So you just have to learn the commands. It takes about 10 minutes and after 10 minutes you will know all the commands which you need for your project and it's such a time saver you can't even imagine. Again, it's such a small package or such a small extension, but it has such a benefit if you actually use that. But now, since you know what ES7 is, let's now continue with the next extension. Now, the next extension which I want to share with you is Fig. Now, I can't really explain to you what Fig is, so let me actually just show it to you with an example. I'll open my terminal and do you know the problem when you want to CD into a file, but you don't really know how to spell it? So right here, what I can do is in CD and now you see all of the actual files and folders which exist in this project. So right here I could now cd into the public folder and without even spelling anything I can click on enter and it will automatically just auto generate the name and then I can cd into this folder. It just helps to actually um, not create any spelling mistakes because if I now try to actually again let me cd out of that cd now into public but I will make a uh, spelling mistake. If I now click enter you'll see we'll get an error. N uh, such folder does not exist and this is just annoying. So with Fig it just makes your life easier, it takes less time, auto generation is great. So I would highly recommend you guys to try out Fig. It really is a life saver but also a time saver. The next package which I want to now share with you is icons. Now what is icons? Well let me open my explorer right here and on the right side you now see we have our explorer and does it look nice? No, honestly, it does not look nice. So if I now enable this extension right here, so the icons extension, you will right here now see that we have a lot of icons for all the folders, but also, of course, for the files. So for example, this is a TSX file, so in React file, you now see we have right here a React icon. If I now, for example, create a Svelte file, so test.svelte, you'll see I'll now have a Svelte icon. It actually just makes it a bit easier for your eyes, but also somehow for your brain, because you exactly know, hey, this file is for this, and this is for this and it just works great. Also you will right here see that the icon library is quite huge so there are icons for actually almost all frameworks or libraries or programming languages so actually you will have for every file an icon which is great. But now since you know what icons is let's now continue with the next extension. Now the next extension which I want to share with you is import cost. 
What is import cost? Well, do you know the situation when you go to NPM and just install a random package because it solves your problem, but when you then later on deploy your actual application with this package, your website is quite slow? Why is that? Well, that's probably because the package size of your actual package is quite huge. Now with import cost, you can actually calculate the size of the import which you use. Let me show you an example. Let's go right here in the layout file and right here I will now try to import something. So right here I can now do an import, let me destructure something, let's do in from at upload things slash react. Now right here I can import something and right here you will now see that the upload drop zone takes 128 kilobytes, not gzipped. Now as you also see, this is marked as red again because it's a bit of a bigger size than normal and uh, this is now fine it won't really slow down my project but it's just nice to see how much each package takes in size or in other words how much cost each size actually right here um, creates. Now the next package which I want to share with you is Putia. What is Putia? Well Putia is a code formatter and it just actually creates consistency in your code base. So let's take an example. If you work on a code base with multiple people, so you work with a team on a code base, you want to actually achieve consistency. Now every developer writes code a bit differently. That means that the formatting is always a bit different. But with Putia, you can actually achieve a consistent formatting, which is quite important in a large code base where multiple developers work on. But now, since we already know what Putia is, let's now continue with the next extension. Now the next extension which I want to share with you is live share. What is live share? So let's imagine the following. You work with a team on a code base and you want to actually share the code base with your team member. And now for that, there are two options. Either A, you use for example Zoom or Teams and just share your screen, but then you have the problem that the actual team member can't edit your code. But if you use live share, your team member can actually see your code, edit your code, you will see two cursors and everything is real time. But you know what's great with live share? It not only actually right here allows you to share your current project, but it also allows you to actually share the debug sessions, the terminal instances, but also the localhost web apps. This is great. All right, everyone, this is live share and that are all of the benefits with live share. And now let's come to the 12th extension and the last extension for this video. And the name of the last extension of this video is Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. So let me show you what it does. Right now I'm in my layout.tsx file and currently I haven't actually enabled Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. If I now go to the div right here and give it a class name and try to say, I don't know, BG red, 500, you see I have no typing. If I would now say text LG, again I have no typing. If I now go back to the extension, enable it actually, go back to the layout file, you'll now see that I actually have right here in color and if I click now on control spacebar, you'll now see I can give this text LG these styles right here. So I could for example say text LG and as you see if I now hover over it, it tells me that the font size is 18 pixels. So yeah, this is Tailwind CSS IntelliSense, definitely a must have if you use Tailwind and most of the people which I know also use Tailwind and have this extension installed because again it's such an actual time saver and makes your life so much easier. So yeah everyone in total we now have covered 12 extensions in this video. I hope you could actually find a few extensions which work for you which you also installed which you tried out and maybe also like them and I actually also hope you like this video and if you liked it please subscribe and like it's free it takes a second and now I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I can see you on the next video. So bye!